Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to the channel. Have you ever wondered if there was a way to figure out why light burn cuts things in the order that it does, or if you could set it up to somehow do the cuts and, and engraves in the order that you want it to do? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how that's done. Let's get into light burn, and we're going to take a good look at optimization settings today. On the screen, I've got a bunch of rectangles with ovals inside of them and I have optimization settings turned off. So if we go into the preview, you'll see how it runs. Yeah, let's play it through real quick. And you see it just kind of goes all kinds of different directions, but also <clears throat> it cuts the inner ovals out after it cuts the outer shape out. And that's bad because if you've cut the outer rectangle, outer shape, if it drops down and moves, your inner shapes are not going to be in the right location. So it gives you problems with accuracy. So typically you want to do all your inner engravings and cuts before you do the outer shape where it comes free from your total sub from your substrate. So I'm going to turn optimizations on now and I'll show you the settings. These are the default settings, order by layer, followed by order by priority, cut inner shapes first, reboot reduce travel moves, choose best starting point, and choose best direction. That's the default settings. For right now, I'm going to remove order by priority. And you'll see why in, in a moment. So with that done, I'm going to bring the same, same file up, no other changes other than turning optimizations on. And because it has um, cut inner shapes first, you'll see it cuts the oval and then the box around it in every situation. Now it's still jumping around a bit, but that's at least a better place where you're, you don't have to worry about your shape moving and your alignment issues. Now I'm going to turn on this numbers layer, which is just a fill layer. And we'll go back into that again. And now I have show traversal moves turned on. Now we can see the red lines. You can see it just fills across, work its way up from the bottom to the top going all the way across as far as it needs to, to to do what it needs to do. We still have just order by layer with cut inner shapes first turned on. Now if we switch reverse these layer orders over here it's going to do things opposite because they're not on the same layer. So it's going to do the cuts first and then come back and do the engraves, which is typically not what you want to do. Like I said earlier, you don't want to do your outer cuts until everything you've done on the inner portion is completed. So the layer order over here overrides the, um, I guess not really overrides, but it is taken into account before to cut inner shapes because this is actually not a cut anyhow, this is a fill, but it's on a separate layer. So it has to look at the individual layer and determine whether it's going to cut, what, what it's going to cut on that particular layer, but it takes the layers in the order that they're listed here. Now a couple things I'd like to show you regarding fill. In fact, let me turn off the output for that. So right now it has fill all shapes at once, which as you saw it went and across the entire screen from side to side as it worked its way up. I'm going to change it to fill shapes individually and we're going to look at it that way. And now you see it is treating each number as its own entity. Even here where it's zero, zero, they are each individual shapes. They're in the same text block but they are individual shapes. Now if I change that to fill groups together, it's going to operate differently. Because the zero zero is going to engrave as one, and I have these two zeros grouped together up top. So you see it still does the individual, but those two it treats as one object and goes from side to side, and it comes down here, then it does both zeros together, and then finishes up. So that's just another option and something you need to look at to whether that's going to how that how that's going to affect your 
engraving speed and just a final product altogether. So it all depends on the speed of your machine, what you're engraving, how you're engraving it. But ultimately you need to make the decision as to which which is going to be the best mode for your particular project. Now we're going to bring in the order by priority on after the order by layer, which I removed that in, in the first portion. Now if we go back here, that can we turn traversal loop moves back off. We don't need to see those anymore. But you see it's still doing the numbers first. And then it did the ones, then the twos, now it's doing the threes. And now it's going around and cutting the boxes and the holes. But did you catch what happened here at the very end? These these are all zero these numbers are all zeros. Let's go run that through that again. In fact, I'll just let it play through at a slower speed. It's engraving all the zeros. It's engraving both of those because they're in the same line as each other. Come back around. Now it did the ones, now it's doing two and hitting both twos because they're on the same priority level. It finishes that up, then it goes and hits the threes. And again, hits both threes. So how and why did it do that? Well, in Shape Properties, if you click on something, there's this Cut Order Priority. By default, it's set to zero. And the way it works is the lower numbers are processed first, and the higher number goes, the higher it's processed. So if I click on this one, and that's actually grouped together, so that's showing up funky. If I click on this box, it has a one. I click on this box, it's a 2. But if I click on the inner inner shape, that's a 3. If I click on this number, I, the numbers represent what I actually have them set at in the cut, layer, cut order priority. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but it's like here the outer box is a 2, and the inner shape is a 3, inner shape is a 2, and the outer box is a 3. Did you catch that at the end of, at the end of the preview? Let's look backwards here. So finished up the ones. Now it's doing the outer box of the two. Then it jumped over to the inner circle. Then that outer box and came back into this inner circle. That's because I have intentionally messed up the cut the order priority. So when you're doing that that overrides even that overrides the layer the cut inner shapes first priority overrides that now here just another demonstration of the priority let me turn those off and here you're going to see it's just going to jump all over the place zero one So it followed the it followed the order that I have set up. And once again I did this with the shape properties, cut priority, one, four, three, six, five. It, it followed the cut order priority. We're going to look at order by group next. And right now I still have the default settings. Let's show you how these squares work out. It's a different set of graphics. So one does the twos, then does the three, then it does the four. Okay. Now, if we go into optimization settings, get rid of layer and priority, and just put group in. If we do it. Bring up the preview. And now it does the four first. Still holds the ones together and the twos together. 
but that's because we don't have order by priority in here. Now if I click on this and bring the preview up, it's not going to change because the order that they're placed in, in that dialog box makes a difference. So now it still did 4, 1, 2, 3. Let me go back into optimization settings, remove group, put group back in. That's how you have to switch the order of them. You have to delete them out and put them in the order that you want them. And bring the preview up for the final time in this part. And now you see it does the ones first, then the twos, then the three, then the four. Okay. Reset my defaults. Now let's go through some of these other settings that we haven't talked about. We already talked about cut inner shapes, cut inner shapes first. That's important. We very important. Cut in direction order. Um, you can choose from top, bottom, left, or right. Let's go from left and see what that looks like real quick. So it starts with the one over there, finishes the one group, then does the twos. And the three and the four, because we still had we still had order by priority or group in there. Order by priority was still in there. So if we want to switch it to start from the right, it's going to look just like it did before with the with that starting with the ones. If we take out, remove priority, and let's go from bottom. This is just, we only have one layer, so layer doesn't even matter at this point, but so now it goes from the bottom up. So that's that one. We'll turn that off. Hide backlash gets rid of all these other options, and it attempts to, to resolve any backlash issues where the lines come together. I don't personally use that feature because I want to know if I have some play in my machine that needs to be addressed mechanically, physically, so I don't use that. Um, reduce direction changes. That can be useful in, in a more complex thing. It kind of it changes the algorithm a little bit in, in where, which order it goes and where it goes from one to the other. Choose corners if possible. That, like if you have this rectangle here, if, if for some reason it decided to start in the middle of this line if you choose choose if you have choose corners on, they'll start in the corner instead, and then end in the corner. That can be useful. But the one that I find most useful in here, other than the the layers priorities, is remove overlapping lines. You turn that on, and here you have a tolerance, and the default is 0 0.025 millimeter, which is really close. But that's a good thing because you don't want it skipping lines that are meant to be apart. You only want lines that are against each other. So now, when we turn this on, in the preview, we'll see, cuts all four sides there, comes over here, cuts all four sides of that one, comes down here, only cuts three sides, and it jumps over here, grabs that one, three sides there, only has to cut one side, run, drops down to the bottom, cuts across, that's done, comes over here, Here. So it's only cutting three sides on most of those rectangles because it doesn't need to cut the extra one. If we turn that back off, and go back into preview, you can see that it cuts all four sides of every shape. And that's just wasteful as far as time, but also like you know, in here, if, if this one moved a little bit and you go back and cut it again, you may actually increase your kerf on something or, or give you a slight, you might see a slightly difference in this line no longer being straight. So that's optimization settings for you in a nutshell. If you really want to optimize your video viewing experience, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more Lightburn tips and tricks. Leave a comment if, there's, if I miss something, if you have a question about any of this. You know, let's, let's get a little dialogue going. So, stay tuned for the channel. There's lots more content coming up. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.